Hi everyone. I wanted to share with you today the multimeter that I've been using for the past six months to do all my electronics work. It's sold by a company called Harbor Freight. You might have heard from it. And it's under the house brand of Centec. It only cost $40 and it served me really well. And here it is right here. It says it's actually a 15 function, 14 function professional digital multimeter with sound level and luminosity. So, how about we turn the camera around and I'll give you a full showing of everything this can do. Okay, well, let's take a visual look of what it has on here first. Of course, it has your voltage settings on it, voltage readings, your diode, your continuity, your capacitor testing, and your ohm rating testing section your microamps, milliamps, and amps. For the uh, amperage or the current testing, you have two areas. You can either do milliamp or microamp from this plug here, which has an automatic resettable fuse in it. I believe it reads up to 400 milliamps. Over that, you'll switch it to the amp setting, and it goes into a 10 amp plug, which has a uh, 10 amp fuse in the back by the battery that is replaceable if you go over that. On the other side from the off button you have a Hertz and duty cycle testing which is great especially if you've been watching my desulfator videos and that helps a lot when it comes to troubleshooting. You have a temperature sensor which is one built in or one external one that plugs into the ports and I'll show you how that works in a few minutes. You also have a luminosity or a lux meter. And 10x also, in case you get into a really bright situation. Now let's take a look real quick at the leads that they supply us. And they're upside down. As you can see, they show on the top one, 10 amp on the negative pin. The other one shows me 1,000 volt, category 3. They are fairly pointy. The quality of the pins are is not half bad, but you can still hear some scratchiness if you're doing a continuity test on it. So they're not perfectly smooth, but for general everyday testing, works absolutely wonderful. And here's just an example of the other side of the pins. Now if we turn the meter on, you can see how big and actually how clear the screen is. When you first turn it on, such as onto the voltage setting, you'll get the random searching because we're not plugged into anything right now. It is an auto ranging meter, so it's currently at millivolts, showing you that we're reading DC voltage, and it's on auto ranging. Up top here, this always stays up. This is your relative humidity and the uh, inside the internal temperature sensor. For some reason, it always defaults to Celsius. You have a button right here, switch it on over to uh, Fahrenheit, you can see in this room I'm at right now, it's roughly about 78 degrees, 47% relative humidity. On the top of this, you'll see right here on, underneath this grid is your humidity sensor and your built-in temp sensor. Also, you have your sound meter and your light meter. So if we take this and switch it over to temperature, temperature setting is for the external ports. Here's another nice feature too. You'll also notice, I'll come back to the temperature in a second, if you don't have the, plug, the uh, plugs plugged in correctly, it will light up and tell you which ones go where. So we'll grab our temperature probe. Black of course goes into the common. As soon as you plug it in, the light goes out. Plug in the temperature, and of course, for some reason, it defaults to Celsius on there. So, click it over to Fahrenheit, and your temperature sensor now reads 79 degrees. So, you bring it up, put it on my finger, responds very quickly, believe it or not. Now, if you've ever fried a meter when you're doing current measurements, and you accidentally had it plugged in the wrong spot, this one will tell you before you ever take your leads 
take your actual leads and plug it in and fry it. See how the light turns back on again as soon as I unplug it? Say I put it in the wrong spot. It will beep and warn you, tell you you do not have them in the correct spot so you don't accidentally fry the meter. It's a wonderful feature I've never seen on any other meter. Now, if we switch over to decibel meters. You see right now roughly, as I talk louder and louder, if I tap on it, it works fairly well. And I think it's good up to about 100 dB, so you're not going to test a jet engine with it or anything. Switch over to Lux. You'll see it's too bright in here right now, but if I start shading it, it'll bring it down. A little bit higher. I think it taps out about 4,000. Yeah, about 4,000 on the regular Lux, and it goes times 10. And if I can pick up some of this, even if I get directly into the sunbeam, it's too bright. If you go online to Harbor Freight's website, where you can buy this for $40, they also have an online manual you can download. Inside that manual, they give you general reference numbers for what average lighting conditions should be in different rooms for different tasks so eh, nice a uh, nice little feature they put into it as well now let's turn it around real quick it does come with a kickstand built into it so it will stand up this other feature is also you see this button here it says hold slash bl it means backlighting so I can actually hold it down for a few seconds, turn it on, and a backlight does come on. Great for when you're in low light situations or working in the evening. You don't want to turn off the light too much and wake up the wife. The only, question, the only problem with it is that when you turn the backlight on, you'll see this little H come on here. That means it's currently holding. So you have to just tap the button real quick. Now you have your backlight and your regular meter. It's a little fluky. It's kind of a should have had a separate button for the backlight but it's nowhere near a deal breaker same deal you want to shut it back off either turn the meter fully off and back on or just hold the button down again and then clear the hold and you got the light back off I usually don't run it with the light on most of the time because any type of backlight on any meter is going to suck down the power real quick so I'm running on the same batteries after six months because I don't use the backlight too much. If you can see on the back here, it tells you it takes three one and a half triple AAA batteries on here, and the rating for the uh, 10 amp fuse that's behind this panel. And all it is is two little screws. You pop it off, and you got the three batteries right here and a fuse right there. That's all. You can't see any circuit board. And I don't see any easy way to open this up to uh, take a look at the internals. So I'm not going to break my nice meter that's been so nice to me. It is a plastic construction, but it's not a flimsy plastic. It's a thick. I mean, I can squeeze it and it's not giving. And all the green areas is like a injection molded rubber, which helps to protect it and gives you a good grip when you're holding. Okay, let's test the uh, voltage meter real quick. I got my super capacitor here from my uh, solar sun jar testing that I'm doing right now. So we're just going to see exactly how well it works. Negative, positive. And it pulls up a signal real quick. So this battery has 0.83 volts into it. And again, the display is really crisp. Now if we switch it over to ohms, you'll see it automatically defaults to ohms. So I'm going to grab a 200 kilo ohm resistor. I'm just going to do a quick test, see how the meter shows up. Apparently that is not a 200 kilo ohm resistor, as I thought it was. There you go. Get my fingers off the leads. I think I was shorting it a little bit across the me. It takes a few seconds for it to take a reading. The uh, resistance it has to auto range itself each time. So there you go, 200 kilo ohm resistor is actually showing about 197 kilo ohms. It is a little slow, like I said, but for the price, you cannot beat the meter. 
Now I want to show you the uh, Hertz and duty cycle setting on here. This is one of my desulfators I currently have running on a battery that's desulfating. And we're going to test the Hertz and duty cycle on the triple five chip just to make sure that's working correctly. Now roughly this circuit is supposed to be running at about one kilohertz at a duty cycle of 95% off or 5% on running time. So we're at the Hertz and duty. It's currently set four hertz. And for triple five chip, we're simply just going to grab pin three, which is your signal out, and go to ground, which is right here. And you'll see we got 1.256 kilohertz, 1.25 kilohertz, which is perfect. Now we hit the hertz and duty cycle button, switch it over to percent, which is your duty cycle. Again, we'll hit the same pins and see how, what the uh, on time is. And you'll see, actually it's the off time. So, this circuit is actually only on about 7% of the time. The spec was originally for this circuit about 5% as well. 7% is perfectly fine. So, just goes to show you that the meter actually works really well. Now one other thing I wanted to show you is we're back over to the ohms and diode and continuity and the capacitance test. Well I want to show you the capacitance test. Right now it's the leads are not connected to anything right now. And we're automatically ranging to nanofarads. This right here is a 0 0.01 microfarad ceramic capacitor, also known as a 10 nanofarad supercapacitor. So we're just going to test the bottom one real quick and show you how fast the meter works here. Takes it a few seconds to charge up the capacitor. See 10.31, if I can keep the connection good. 10.30 nanofarads. So it is a 10, 10 nanofarad uh, capacitor. So that's even a useful function, especially if you're working with small electronics like the solar sun jars that I'm working with right now. So that's my little quick review of the uh, Centec P98674 multimeter. Basically the house brand for Harbor Freight. I will have the link if you do not have a Harbor Freight near you. Uh, I'll put it down in the comments or in the description area for a link to Harbor Freight to this meter that you can order online and have shipped to you. Again, it's only $40. I have no clue what the shipping charges is because I have a Harbor Freight about 10 minutes away from me. But for the amount that you will pay for a more expensive, more name brand meter, you get this for $40. You would spend over probably about $150 for the more name brand. And it's almost as good. The uh, sensitivity, the settings on here, the different um, measurements you can read on it, you can't beat it for the price. So give it a shot. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks.